Hey, welcome back to Off the Grid. If you spend any time on a small island in Canada's British Columbia, the commute is the least of your problems. In fact, it's sort of fun. But water and electricity are the big challenges. Now, we covered water in our last episode. Today, we're going to talk about electricity. Now, this island is just too small to have any streams. So that sort of rules out hydroelectric power. And yeah, it can get really windy around here, but it can also be really calm and not much in between. So wind power is not a consistent option, at least not here. So that leaves us with the sun and our trusty solar panels. Now, we've done an, an earlier episode on solar energy, but I thought I'd walk you through this one because our system here, although it's got a lot of similarities, it's designed very differently. You might find it of interest. Now we start out with our four solar panels. From here on, it changes. The first difference is that we actually have two solar panel systems, one for the main house that I just showed you, and another, just a single panel, that supplies our bathhouse here, which is available for visitors when we have friends come and visit. The second major difference, and time out here, little truth in YouTubing, we also have a generator. Ours is a Ryobi 3500 running watts modified sine wave. Now, we just as soon not have a generator. We prefer to be on a totally sustainable off-grid system, but it's really not practical up here. Uh, one of the problems is it's cloudy 60% of the time. Second is, in the winter time, we only have about eight hours between sunrise and sunset, and we live in the middle of a the bottom of a fjord with mountains to our left, to our west, to our east. So we only have maybe three hours of usable sunlight in a day during winter. That's if it's not raining. Somehow we have to fill in that and that's where our Ryobi generator comes into play. Okay, confession complete. Now let's go up the hill and I'll show you how all the different pieces of the system fit together. All right, let's start with our solar array. We have four panels, four PV panels together. They produce 48 volts. That volt and that voltage goes to a charge controller. Now this is the one, the first major difference between this system and the system that we have in the United States. Instead of a very expensive unit like a Magnusine, which is a charge controller, a charger, an inverter. This simply takes the current from the panels, 48 volts, steps it down to 12 volts, and sends it to our batteries. Three-stage charging, bulk, absorb, float. So there's our charge controller. It's considerably less expensive than a, one of these larger units like the one we have in the States. Okay, so from here, the 12-volt current it goes through a fuse and then is delivered to our batteries. This is the second major difference between systems. These batteries are 12 volt. Our other system uses L16 six volt batteries. These are size 27 12 volt batteries. Only one reason for the difference in what we chose. These things are a hell of a lot lighter than those big L16s. And we have to go up 42 steps from the dock to the house to put these things in place. This is a lot less work. Okay, we have our 12 volt batteries coming from the charge controller. Third big difference, the power from these batteries goes directly to our house. In other words, our house is largely powered by 12 volt electricity, not 120 AC. Again, we avoid the expense of a large inverter. Instead, our lights are 12 volt. The water pump for the house is 12 volt. Our UV sterilizer light for our water system is 12 volt. So the power goes directly to the house from the batteries. It's not to say we don't need 110 AC now and again. I need it for my power tools. We need both need it to charge our computers or our phones. 
need a hair dryer, you've got to have 110 power. But instead of, again, having that expensive inverter system, we went out and purchased a small 1500 watt inverter, kind of thing you can get in an automotive store. And we wired our battery bank through a fuse into the inverter. Now the inverter then goes through what is called an automatic sensor switch. Now, these switches you can buy from RV supply stores. What they do is an RV, of course, has its own power on board, a little generator, or whether at an RV park, they'll use the RV park's power. This thing senses when the power is coming in and it switches on. So here's our inverter. Here's our sensor here. Sensor identifies electricity coming in. It sends power to our breaker box. These are regular household breakers. Those breakers then deliver 120 volt power to the house. Now, in the Pacific Northwest, you don't get as much daylight as you get in places like Arizona or Mexico. So we ended up buying a generator. Generator here also is wired into the sensor switch. And now you can see why we have it. You have two different sources of AC power. When the generator's on, it senses it and it defaults to the generator, shutting this off. Again, supplying the breaker panel, which then delivers power to our house. The last piece of our system is a battery charger. So when our solar panels aren't putting out enough energy, we have to have some way to charge our batteries. So what we got was, from a marine supply store, a 40 amp battery charger for 12 volts. So what we do, the power is coming in from the generator, it's going to our breaker panel, and one of our breaker switches goes to the battery charger, and then the battery charger charges the batteries. That's our system. Again, we've got our solar panels, goes through a charge controller, fused into six 12 volt size 27 batteries. They supply the house, our lights, our water pump, our UV sterilizer. When we need 110, we have a small inverter, which is wired in through a sensor switch to a breaker panel, which delivers power to plugs throughout the house. When we don't have enough, enough sun, to generate electricity for our batteries or the house. We have a small generator, goes through the same sensor switch into the breaker box here. Again, delivering power to the house. It also allows us to charge our batteries using a 40 amp battery charger. That's our system. That single solar panel I mentioned earlier feeds two batteries and it supplies 12 volt power to our bathhouse and to two small sleeping cabins. It has its own three stage charge controller, that's on the right, and a switch on the left which activates our water pump. You can see there down on the bottom right in this frame. It also provides lights for our bathhouse and to the two sleeping cabins. Now we don't live here full time and if we did we might have a more sophisticated electrical system but you know it works for us. We've been here for 16 years, nothing's broken. We've only had to replace the batteries once. So when it's time to go, we just flip those breakers off, stabilize the fuel in our generator, put our prawn traps away, and we get in our boat, and we head home. See you on our next trip to the island.